I want to be liked. I hope that each and every one of you out there like me. I hope you like this talk. I hope you like me as a person. When I go home, I'll hop in my car and I'll worry that you didn't. This is normal. It's natural, this feeling. We, want, we all want to be liked. I think about it especially as a woman because so much of our value is defined by our relationships. It matters if other people like us, especially men. It matters if they think that we're nice. It matters if they think that we're too cold, aggressive, abrasive. Alicia Menendez, the author of The Likeability Trap, has described this as the Goldilocks conundrum. Speaking to NPR last year, she said, a woman, it seems, is never just right. She gave an example of a woman who is very well liked in her office, and she'll be told that while she's liked, she doesn't have what it takes to lead. And of course, it's never quite clear exactly what it is. Then she gives an example of a woman who has all of the characteristics that we would ascribe to someone who is strong. She asserts herself, he, she lobbies for things, and she'll be told that while she has what it takes to lead, she needs to tone it down lest she ruffle too many feathers. Now, I know that not everybody likes me. I'm something of a public figure. I've covered college sports for 10 years now, and every time I write, my name is right there next to the article. I give my opinions on the radio in front of a national audience almost every single day. I give my opinions on television. So I know that I will never have 100% approval ratings. Someone somewhere will believe that their favorite team is being slighted or disrespected. Praise for one player means that someone else isn't getting it. And this is when I remind myself that fans is short for fanatics. And fanatics don't always respond to reason. So someone may take an issue with the message that I'm delivering, but someone else may take issue with the dress that I'm wearing to deliver said message. And someone may just be having a bad day and they've decided to take it out on a stranger on social media. But either way, I know every single day there will be at least one person who disagrees with something that I say every single day. As a woman in a male-dominated field, and especially one that centers on communication, I am particularly attuned to the words that others use to describe me, whether that is a stranger on the internet or my own colleagues. I may think that I'm standing up for myself, but I'll worry that someone else will read that as me being too full of myself for taking credit for my own hard work. I may worry that I'll alienate someone if I tell them how I really feel about something. Or worse, if I don't raise my hand to pick up that extra assignment, the one that no one else wants to do, the one that will keep me late. I want others to like me, but I also want to be great at what I do. And sometimes in order to do that, you do have to be willing to ruffle some feathers. The summer before my senior year of college, I landed a prestigious internship at USA Today, a national newspaper. I was excited, I was thrilled, and I was so nervous that I actually threw up before I went in on the very first day. It was an incredible opportunity, but I also knew how high their standards were and how high the bar to clear would be to impress my experienced veteran colleagues. The bar was here, and I had to rise up to meet it. One afternoon, I was assigned a story on the New York Mets and how they'd responded from an injury-ravaged season the year before. And I needed to get the manager, Jerry Manuel, at the time. So I get to the ballpark, it becomes pretty clear to me that the Mets public relations staff is not going to be able to help me. So if I'm going to get this manager, I'm going to have to do it myself. So for an hour and a half, I waited. I waited in the clubhouse, I waited outside of his office, I waited in the dugout. No luck. I'm running out of options, and I'm thinking, what could be my last-ditch effort? Maybe I can grab him as he's physically walking onto the field before the game. So I share this plan with one of the local Mets beat writers, who is very amused by it, and he says to me sarcastically, good luck with that. A couple minutes pass, and Jerry Manuel comes up the steps. 
Instantly, I'm by his side. He had a few moments, he told me, and when those few moments turned into 10 minutes, I had the interview that I needed for my story. When I next saw that same Mets beat writer, he looked at me chuckling and he said, Nicole, I didn't even see Jerry walking up the stairs. You're aggressive in a good way. Now, I'm glad he added that last bit because he knew what the connotations around that word were, as did I, aggressive, especially for a woman. But here's the thing, I was being aggressive. I had to. There was no way I was gonna call my editor and tell him that I didn't have any usable quotes. So much of journalism is waiting around. The difference in how you use that time be the difference between an average reporter and the one who gets the story. There are some times where luck comes into play, yes. But I have found that the best reporters tend to be in the right place at the right time for a reason. My dad always used to tell us that the most important thing in life is showing up. And that's true for birthdays and weddings and funerals. It's true when someone's sick, when someone's celebrating, you show up. And now, all these years later, that's basically what my job is. I show up. I'll drive two hours on a random Wednesday night just to shake a coach's hand, get a couple minutes of small talk in. I'll fly across the country to go to a conference just to see one person I haven't seen that year. I'll interrupt a media scrum or dart across a hotel lobby just to introduce myself to someone that I haven't met before. Like I said, I'm aggressive. And I'm aggressive when I'm chasing news too, which is how I break it. I'm aggressive in a good way, which to me means that I show up, I care, I work hard. But it also means that I can't control what other people think they know about me. I've been the only person in a room who looks like me too many times to count. I've had coaches question my knowledge of their sport as if it were rocket science and not basketball. I've had a player agent call me in an attempt to intimidate me, thinking that I would be more of a pushover than my older male colleagues. I've had league officials try to shoot down my reporting in conversations with my own coworkers. And in each case, I get up the next day, I go to work, and I continue to report accurately and fairly. Now, I talk to other women in my profession all the time, and we all have similar experiences, we all have similar fears. We all worry that we're coming on too strong. So we pick up a lot of the grunt work so that no one can say, she's not a team player. We may not always ask for raises or promotions the same way that our male colleagues do, because we genuinely are just happy to be there. It is these women and these relationships that sustain me on a daily basis. And I've had some incredibly supportive male allies as well, who have my back publicly and privately every single day. But when you're in the middle of a hurricane, you feel so lonely. You feel like you're the only one whose value is being questioned, the only one who can never seem to do enough. You don't want to speak up, but you feel like you have to speak up because if you don't, what's the point of being there? You're looking for mentors to help guide you, and you're also looking for others that you can mentor so that you're not the only one who looks like you the next time. How do you deal with the fact that your mere existence may make someone angry, may make someone jealous, that someone might call you names, that someone may just not like you? I would say to stop worrying what other people think, if that were easy to do, but it's not. So my advice to you is this. Reframe what other people think. Reframe their descriptions of you. Be aggressive in a good way. Be resilient, be relentless. Your work is what you do. It is not what other people say about you. Even in a world where it's easier than ever to hear and absorb the negatives, even in a world that teaches us to compare ourselves to someone who may be prettier, thinner, more successful, richer, 
maybe even more well-liked. My reputation is my own. It is something that I work hard every single day to earn and to re-earn so that I can tell the best stories possible with the trust of my sources, so that people know they can come to me not just for the news, but for the whole story. That's why I chased that Mets manager down all those years ago. That's why I chase people down every single day. I am aggressive, in a good way. And I'm not gonna apologize for that. By the way, despite all of that, I do genuinely hope that you liked this. Thank you. <laughs>